this is what u s backed regime change used to look like back in the days in a bid to ensure u s. political and economic interests were safeguarded cia backed coup d'etats ousted democratically elected leaders from mohammad mossadegh in iran to salvador allende in chile and in their place all too often brutal dictatorships and governments that committed heinous crimes against their people by the nineteen eighties the reign of terror that blazed across latin america by washington's henchmen was too much for most people to stomach to replace the overt support for dictatorships a new concept for regime change was born one that sounds and looks better democracy promotion the concept of democracy promotion is simple finance train and politically back local opposition forces around the world that support washington's agenda Dr. William Robinson is the foremost expert on regime change through democracy promotion. He wrote the book Promoting Polyarchy. In Latin America, in uh, Eastern Europe with the Velvet Revolutions, in Africa, in, uh, in the Middle East, all, really all, over, all over the world. And, and so the U.S. set up these different mechanisms now for penetrating the civil societies and the political systems of, of countries that are going to be intervened and to assure that the outcomes would be pleasing to, to Washington's foreign policy objectives. We do this through surrogates and we do this through uh, non-governmental organizations and we do it through people who are uh, less suspecting of the evil that may lurk behind their actions uh, than perhaps they were before. Um, have we learned some lessons in that regard? You bet. Uh, do we do it better? You bet. Is it still just as heinous as it always was? You bet. So while the goals remain the same, it's no longer the CIA but the U.S. Agency for International Development. USAID and its partners spearheading this effort. Alan Weinstein, one of the founders of the National Endowment for Democracy, explained to the Washington Post in 1991, a lot of what we do now was done covertly by the CIA 25 years ago. And like the CIA, USAID, the National Endowment for Democracy, and a slew of similar organizations receive funding from Congress. Millions and millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars go every year into funding for political organizations and campaigns in different countries around the world that promote U.S. agenda. And most U.S. citizens are unaware of the fact that that's how their money is being spent, to meddle and influence and interfere in other nations' affairs. The concept of facilitating regime change through democracy promotion has garnered widespread criticism, not just abroad, but also here at home. Congressman Ron Paul once wrote, It is particularly Orwellian to call U.S. manipulation of foreign elections promoting democracy. How would we Americans feel if, for example, the Chinese arrived with millions of dollars to support certain candidates deemed friendly to China? I think it's terrible. We use taxpayers' money to go over and use our military and our CIA and these programs to say, this is what you ought to do and influence them. There's no authority for that. It doesn't work. It teaches a lot of people to despise it. Images of spontaneous popular uprisings in defense of democracy and free elections far from the U.S. or maybe not so spontaneous or so very far from the U.S. <laughs> The refined model for subverting a target country's internal politics in favor of U.S. interests has been playing out worldwide, its stage name, Democracy Promotion. Taking the lead in developing this new template for nonviolent regime change, the U.S. Agency for International Development and the National Endowment for Democracy. It's not complicated, but it's very effective. All the sectors of civil society will be identified, and those that are pliant for the U.S. part of the, uh, or can be brought on board to the U.S. project, the interventionist project, will then receive uh, funding and guidance. One of the many examples is the color revolutions in Eastern Europe. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson was the chief of staff to former Secretary of State Colin Powell during the color revolutions and recalls the involvement of the USAID and NED. As I saw happen, for example, in Ukraine, as I saw happen in Georgia, as I, as I see happening in other places too, they don't just um, propagandize or attempt to help with words and rhetoric that opposition. They actually do things that give that opposition more power. They copy from, from, from one edge to, to the other. I think the first one that was successful was the one in Yugoslavia or, or Serbia. Serbia. And they, they borrowed uh, all kinds of things from that revolution, uh, including 
uh, certain slogans and, and colors and, and symbols. So they, 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 they study what succeeds and, what, and, and they use it again and again. According to analysts, youth groups were energized, rock bands lined up, laser shows were put on, the movements were marketed as cool. The, the object was to make them into a, a national passion, a national fad, if you will. Student leaders of the Serbian youth group Optpor, who played a key role in the 2000 ousting of Slobodan Milosevic, met seven to ten times with officials from USAID affiliates, according to the New York Times. The same group also received several hundred thousand dollars for demonstration material, T-shirts and stickers. On the other side of the world in Latin America, some of the most active and capable programs have and continue to flourish in countries where capitalism isn't the agenda. In Venezuela, and yeah, that's easily the most, uh, the place where they send the most money. Chavez is enemy number one. Meet Maria Corina Machado. By many standards, and to plenty of critics, a product of U.S. interventionalism. Machado rose to fame with an NGO known as Sumate, an organization that received hundreds of thousands of dollars from USAID and NED. They led the fierce campaigns against Venezuela's democratically elected president and his Bolivarian revolution. And in our case, in fact, we did receive funding from National Endowment for Democracy. Like Georgia Saakashvili, foreign financing bolstered Machado's image on the national and international stage, even granting her a meeting with President George W. Bush. This is more than just, you know, funding going to some NGO. This is about promoting an, in, an individual who has the capacity to rise to power, basically, and who will share and promote U.S. agenda. Since 2000, USAID activated more than 620 programs in Venezuela alone, costing up to $20 million. These USAID memos from 2002 and 2003 describe the urgency of supporting civil society and the media and the continuation of stable, free market-oriented democracy in Venezuela. The word free market is key. The president of the National Endowment for Democracy, Carl Gershman, insists democracy promotion does not mean regime change. People like him equate democracy with capitalism. And so if he's working against a socialist government or a socialist movement, in his mind, he's working for democracy. Party, but who's picking up the tab? Apparently you are, the American taxpayer. Nine billion dollars spent by the United States Agency for International Development on promoting Washington's democracy initiatives. A new model for influencing a target country's internal politics in favor of U.S. interests through financing, training, support and guidance to pro-U.S. forces in foreign countries. Another democracy promoter, the National Endowment for Democracy, received $132 million during 2009, nearly all of it from U.S. government agencies. But these are just the tip of the iceberg. There is an entire network of organizations involved in the democracy promotion business. Now in its third decade of helping breathe the life of democracy and freedom into people without hope all across the world. The International Republican Institute stands... Although all organizations insist there is no political affiliation, the board of directors for both NDI and IRI suggest otherwise. Former secretaries of state, national security advisors, members of Congress, and even Clinton, Bush, and Reagan administration officials. They all have a history in Washington, one deeply rooted in sustaining the current foreign policy priorities. To understand U.S. foreign policy, one must first understand a very basic fact. The U.S. government wants to dominate the world. This is what democracy promotion brought the people of Honduras. While USAID requests $800,000 for strengthening governance and democracy in Honduras, journalists and activists are being brutalized and killed under the U.S.-backed government. 
In Egypt, a revolt against the U.S.-backed policies of the Hosni Mubarak regime has mobilized these agencies to co-opt opposition groups, ensuring the result of the upcoming elections will be beneficial to Washington. Wail Nawara is a member of an Egyptian opposition party that received funding or support from many. NDI, the IRI, the people like Carnegie, of course, bombed the project of uh, Middle East democracy, uh, the NED, uh, National Endowment for Democracy. With information and support. Many who study these agencies believe the soft money working behind the scenes is directly linked to the CIA. They, they had to have this uh, a new organization with a nice sounding name, democracy in it, a nice sounding name which would, would be free of the taint of the CIA. And that's been, that was the reason the NAD was created. USAID has implemented democracy promotion initiatives in over 100 countries in the past 25 years. This year's budget, $1 billion. According to USAID's website, spending $10 million in a target country increases its amount of democratic change fivefold. How much of your tax money would you like to go to promoting uh, democracy in Venezuela? No, uh, not that much. Would you be okay if foreign governments were giving our politicians money for the election campaign? No, that would bother me. And herein lies the hypocrisy. We have a very clear law on the books prohibiting foreign governments from interfering in our elections, of supporting any candidates with money. So we do exactly abroad what we prohibit at home. Encouraging transparency is a stated core element of the U.S. government's democracy promotion efforts in foreign countries. However, here at home, the agencies themselves are far from transparent. Detailed budget programs are unavailable to the public, and contact with the media is limited. Over the last six weeks, RT repeatedly requested interviews with USAID, NED, IRI, and NDI. All of our requests were either denied or unanswered. Jahan Hafiz, RT, Washington, D.C.